Welcome to this week's Aiding Your Game. Today we're going to be talking about strongholds or your character's base of operations. Let's dive into it. Now, before we start today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you don't mind the notifications, be sure to ding that bell. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. Leave a comment down below if there's content you'd like to see us cover here on the channel. And please share this video with your friends who may also enjoy RPG discussions. Bases of operations, strongholds, defensive points, home. Whatever they're called in our game worlds, one important thing that I feel is crucial for a good developing adventure party is a base of operations. Whenever I start any type of campaign setting, as mentioned in the last video, I start with a region area. And usually some of the features or areas that I put into that region map contain suitable places that the characters could build a base of operations. Now, I may put in three or four different areas that I feel could make a good base of operations, but regardless of how many I kind of pepper in, I always leave it up to the characters to decide to adopt something. Sometimes those can be as simple as an old keep that's kind of in ruin and needs repaired, maybe off the beaten path, but it allows the players to start thinking about how they can build a place for themselves to be a reprieve from the life of an adventurer. Here's a look at the map we drew together when we made an adventure together. And this map you can see we did it very direct from the starting location to the end location. One thing we didn't do was put in our four to six points of interest. That's really because this is designed for a one-shot adventure. But it would be very easy to decide a couple of cool locations that we could add in some features and have points of interest beyond this adventure. Let's talk about a couple of them that we could pop on here really easy. South of the finish location, in one of the passes that we did put in here, we could put in a little outpost that has been abandoned long since and guards a road. This could be a great location for possibly a haunted area, something that could draw the interest of players after they complete the adventure. West of the swamps, we have the Dent Pass. It would be super easy to drop in an old abandoned watchtower, or maybe even something that's currently occupied by a faction of the cultists from the adventure or even an evil warlord. Something to put a point of interest, possibly some world lore, into this location. And not far away from the home village. A mysterious cave opening in the hills along the swamp in the riverbed could be a great place to add some villains and have a little bit of underground adventures going under the hills and possibly some of the drainage from the swamp could lead to some great adventure ideas. And then in the city of Thetis, if we had a large bronze statue that as the PCs were freeing the enslaved prisoners from the adventure could have some type of a secret door underneath that leads to a staircase descending down to an older village that has been built over ages ago. This could contain all kinds of opportunity for more world lore as well as the discovery of additional maps or clues to other adventure areas. So a great way to tie in the home village with some fantastic opportunities to move beyond that into different adventuring stories. And, of course, depending on the type of campaign you're running, that could be all different kinds of things. In my pre-dawn campaign, it's all urban setting, and the base of operations that the character selected is actually 
an old tavern that was closed and partially burnt and three floors above. Now they've been able to repair it and reopen the tavern, which is actually generating them some funds. And then they're using the three levels above as well as one below that they kind of excavated and built out for their base of operations. In the kingdoms of Espar, they actually had a city that they helped fortify and defend while building an inn with a fighting pit attached to it. In the Last Light campaign, they're using a cloud giant palace that has still been hovering long after it's been abandoned and attacked and kind of crumbling into ruin for their base of operations. Now, each of these bases of operations were initially put into the region map and not really highlighted, but definitely there from the get-go. Some of the adventurers had the party go through and explore these and have adventures in these locations, and they kind of realized that this would be a cool place for us to set up shop. Some of them I actually had a lord gift this rundown keep or whatever to the players to, to kind of allow them the idea that they can use this as a base of operations. As you're creating your game world and starting your regional map, I highly recommend thinking about a couple of things that you can pepper in there that would work as a base of operations that would show interest, be defensible, but still lead to opportunities for further adventures at their home base. There's nothing worse than having your players think they're getting some downtime and they get attacked by a raiding band of bugbears or have some other adventurers or veterans feel that they deserve that as their location and try to lay siege. Great opportunity for a different type of storytelling that you can use for different one shots if not all of your players are able to get to the game night or just to continue telling stories of your adventurers and their successful adventures. Now when you're building opportunities for bases of operations for your characters some of the things to really think about is are they going to have enough space? How are they most likely going to use that space? And are you giving them both the tools as well as the support to be able to make that base both defendable as well as kind of make it their own? They should not have any huge opportunities unless you're using that as a story hook for an adventurer to get supplies, start establishing trade routes, and reclaim possibly ancient ruins if that's the type of location that you're offering them as a base of operations. It shouldn't be too difficult for them to be able to find a place and make it their own home. Unless, as mentioned, you want that to be part of an adventure. I've used a lot of different types of bases of operations, as mentioned before. Some of the things that really sparked my mind in looking at what would make a cool base of operations is having been played before, the kind of things that I used to look for, as well as looking at different types of Pinterest pictures and pictures online that people are drawing of different adventure locations or scenery, even just some creative thought on some of the natural things around me. If there's a great cave system, that could be something really cool for the players to kind of build around and make their own. So many different ways that I get ideas and inspiration for bases of operations. As mentioned, I try to pepper in four or five of them into each of my maps. Sometimes they don't even get used. I'll reuse those in different campaigns, give them a different name, give them a different location, but if there's something that I've come up with and had an idea for and I don't get to use it in a campaign because I have the luxury of running multiple campaigns, I do get to reuse a lot of the ideas that I have and move it to a different location with a different name and still have it get explored. However, if my players change their mind and don't find the interest that I do in the thing, one thing I've found that I enjoy to do is use that for a base for a villain, sometimes introducing a new villain moving into the area and kind of crowding their way in and putting another opportunity for a different adventure for my players to take on that challenge can be great for your primary antagonist to be able to put one of his bishops or knights in an area that you intended for your PCs could hit close to home to them. 
and to make them hate that antagonist even more for different bases of operations. I've also used things like some of the published materials, the Castle Guide, early adventures that featured something like a manor house or a small keep, even a great moat house that has been crumbling and ruining, something that they can then build and take on their own. And of course, as you're building in those opportunities for a base of operations, as the characters start to build out that base of operation and make it their own, one thing to start doing is bringing in some of the NPCs that you've introduced early on who may have really taken to the PCs, may owe the PCs, or just may have an opportunity to bring the PC some type of news. It's a great way to continue utilizing NPCs that are important and that you want to have as those kind of recurring characters or guest stars or guest stars in your stories. By having those NPCs continue to support the PCs at their base of operations, it also allows you to bring in more world lore as well as steer players towards different adventures and adventuring ideas. If your players are heavy into storytelling and role play and uh, lean a little bit further away from a lot of the tactical, this is a great opportunity having a base of operation for a lot of these RP opportunities to take place, whether it's with NPCs uh, working on how to get materials for repairing or rebuilding, even just with locals in the area people that they can connect to and have that much more immersion and storytelling opportunity and agency. Having a base of operations puts in a couple of important aspects to that. One is consistency. If your players and their characters can build more consistent relationships with the NPCs that you're introducing, the immersion continues to be stronger and stronger. It becomes more real because there aren't massive changes from session to session. There's that bit of familiarity that they actually start building emotional support and emotional bonds with those constant recurring characters. And whether they're good or bad, whether they're benevolent or benign, that consistency and that solidity in your game world is going to help the players, one, be more familiar with the area at large and the type of stories that you're running, but have that emotional connection that's going to make them support your continued exploration of your world through their characters and be more invested in your game. Strongholds aren't just important for the characters to have an area to rest after adventuring days. They're not just important to have an opportunity to have an adventure with antagonists that your characters can overcome. They're important for GMs to be able to flesh out their world and really look at opportunities for better storytelling and better opportunities for utilizing some of the tools and inspirations that, that they deal with every day. But it's also important for your players because it does bring that higher level of immersion and emotional attachment so that they have better opportunity to enjoy telling stories together with you, the GM. Leave me a comment below and let me know about your players' bases of operations. What's some of the coolest things or some of the most challenging things that you've had to face as a GM with your players' bases of operations? I hope you enjoyed that video. Here's a link to another video that you may enjoy. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button to help us grow. If you'd like to support us, make sure you check out the description of the video with some links and leave a comment to let us know where will your adventures take you.